Well, hello, the internet. You're looking nice today. Today on Stephen Inks, I thought maybe we switch things up a little bit and talk about a pen for a change. Now, stay with me. Hold on. A little something new here on the channel. Um, this is the Kaigaloo 316 in Starry Night Finish. This is a Chinese pen that kind of looks like those high-end resin pens, but it's uh, definitely made of its own thing. We're going to see how this works. Um, is it a good pen? Is it worth buying at its price point, which is on the lower end? Um, and uh, we're going to do some drawings with it. So hope you're ready for a change in pace. Here we let's get a look at this pen close up. Um, first of all, I do notice that uh, there is something to this finish. It's got little sparkles in it. If you can see that, it's um, if you can get it to focus there, it is. There's a little bit of attention to design. The, this finish is called uh, like Starry Night or Night Sky or something like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, I notice, and I, um, let's see if the camera will pick this up. I notice in the cap, you can kind of see right along the edge there where it's been glued. There's a lining that's been glued along there. And that's fairly obvious. If this were a trans, uh, if this were not a translucent resin, or it's probably injection molded plastic, let's be honest, um, you wouldn't be able to tell. But since it's semi translucent, you can kind of see that and the gluing is very obvious. There's also let's see if we can get in here. There's a gap in this metal band right there along the edge, I can stick my fingernail into it. And um, it's pretty obvious. So a lot to be desired as far as the design is concerned. Um, I do I do love a really good um, finial decoration and there's a is a kangaroo and Chinese characters, I'm assuming that's the name of the brand. Um, I kind of wonder if Kaigaloo is some sort of a Chinese word for kangaroo. I'm not a language expert, but sometimes phonetically things line up like that. Um, the clip is clippy. It's got a clip clip sort of vibe to it. Um, I don't know what else to say about this. It's a fairly common style. I've seen it before. It's got a little wide towards the base and it swoops down. Um, it moves just a little bit, but it's a pretty stiff clip. Um, here's an interesting thing. The back end of this pen actually can be removed completely. And I thought at first that maybe, because you can see that that tip, that little piece right there, that is actually the converter. And if this end right here was just a little bit lower, you could access the converter without taking uh, it out of the body of the pen which would be so cool. Um, but they didn't actually do that. They just have this um, end cap here that you can screw and unscrew for whatever reason. I don't know what purpose it serves, but it could have served an amazing purpose. I want that pen with a little, uh, just screwed off and you, you, it basically becomes a piston filler. Uh, that'd be so cool. Anyway, taking the cap off and I do like the body shape here. We have, uh, we have some nice, see if I can get a zoom in. We have some nice stamping of the, uh, that kangaroo logo right there. There's an extra fine. Um, the semi-translucence, again, I, I don't feel like that does very many favors to this design because you could definitely see the parts that are glued and pasted together when you can see through the pen. I think this translucence thing should really apply only uh, if the design and engineering of your pen is beautiful. And this is kind of slapdash. Um, anyway, unscrewed here, we've got metal threads. Metal on plastic can sometimes be an issue, but um, I'm not complaining for how much I paid for it. Um, we've got The words, okay, 316, oh, sorry, I'm not in focus. There's 316, and then it says 
21. I'm not sure why it says that in the the edge of the whoa. Um, the edge of that says like 21, and then it says Kaigalu, and uh, branded here it says Kaigalu. It's a really weird little like metal cap to a translucent um, piston. But I mean, it looks like it'll work. This is slightly modeled. Oh, and actually it, it does um, unscrew, which is cool. Um, it feels like it's slightly modeled after uh, like a platinum converter because they have that sort of domed metal piece like this and this metal ring. Um, and this looks like a pilot converter, which, you know, this little piston right here, which yuck. But um, can't blame them for trying. So mm, this doesn't seat very comfortably, but it does feel kind of snug when it goes in there. So hopefully that'll work. Um, let's just see, friction fit nib, oh, slid right out. That's not always a good sign when the nib comes out, but the feed doesn't. But there's the feed. Looks a little bit like a, um, seen this before somewhere, like maybe a kind they use in like, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of a stock standard feed that I feel like I've seen somewhere before. Anyway, and there's um, the bottom of this. This is, I do like this when you can remove a friction fit nib that it does appear to have. Let's see if we can get focus on there some kind of like ridges right there that should show you how to put it back together. So uh, we will put this back together and then we're gonna do some drawings. Okay, so the, um, the pen came back together beautifully. Here she is. And um, I decided, even though with black pens, I do feel the freedom to uh, put whatever ink I want in them, whatever color, I decided to go with um, the Lamy Crystal Agate color, which is a nice sort of greenish gray. Um, I used this color, no, I used a, a gray color for my challenge, um, one pen, one ink, one month, which I really did not enjoy, by the way, because it was hard to choose just one pen and one ink. Um, but I'm not sick of gray yet. I still do really like gray for as a drawing ink. So I'm gonna use this. Um, and again, if you're unfamiliar with how a piston converter works, this video is for you because we're gonna go over the steps right here. So um, when you've put it inside the ink and you gotta cover it up to this plastic part right here, push all the air out and then twist it back. And we should get, hmm, but we are not getting ink. Hold up. Hmm. Let me just make sure that everything's good here. Something about the way that this is turning doesn't doesn't bode well. I think we have a loose set nib. Oh dear. I'm going to look into this and try again. Okay, having come back, uh, I took a, it didn't feel like this uh, converter was sealing very well, so I took a Schmidt converter out of one of my other pens, and this is what we're going to attempt. I'm not happy with this idea, because if the converter that's supplied doesn't work, this definitely feel a little more solid. That would mean I have to sacrifice a pen that I like already in order to use this one. So that's not good. Um, I'm going to tilt this slightly and see if we get a better result this way. And if it doesn't work, uh, I don't hear any bubbles going from the ink. It's something about this is not, yeah, it's not giving me anything. Let's just have a look in the converter. And man, the ink's going all the way through the, the feed, but I'm wasting a lot of an ink that I really like actually. Yet yeah, it's going up to, you can see that there's some ink here. 
in the top right on the edge, but it doesn't go past my focus. It doesn't go past just the edge there. So just get that to focus. I think we need to move the ink out of the way. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, this is not good news. It's not coming up. That tells me that there's probably um, an air leak somewhere in the section of this pen. My other thought would be to try and fill the converter. We'll go back to the original one that was supplied with ink using a syringe and then see if it'll stay inside the pen. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that now, but um, if this doesn't work, then we have on our hands a defective pen, which is maybe the first one that I've had I've had a really good track record with pens that work. So um, with this syringe, this is a blunt needle syringe, so not a medical syringe. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. I don't wanna put too much because I'm afraid that something's gonna happen. And I, like I said, this is one of my favorite inks and I don't wanna waste it more than I already have. This is my blotting cloth uh, that I use to clean off the nib. So. That being attached, look at that gapping right there. Look at the gap between the edge of the um, section and the converter. That's quite wide. All right, if I turn this upside down, let's just see what happens. Um, doesn't appear to be doing anything. So I, I guess we could try to use it still makes me nervous. I'm worried that this uh, the nib isn't going to actually be set on the on the feed and that's going to create a huge burping and blobbing issue but we'll see if that's the case. Let's check it out. Okay so we have some paper. We have a pen. Allegedly a pen. And let's see if this thing knows how to make lines on paper. Mm, okay. Ooh, I don't know if you saw that, but I tried to draw a line and scratch. It sort of uh, skipped a lot. I do like this line. The question is, and the only way to know for sure is to just keep using it. Is this going to um, blob and make a mess? This is a good line sort of a Western extra fine, which oftentimes these Chinese pens will be one or the other. I hate how that posts. It posts super awkwardly. So like, and this pen is just slightly small for my hand. I kind of wonder if, if this is what this thing is for. If we take this end off, does it post more better? No. Okay. Is it twist under the threads? No. Okay, so this is completely pointless. Um, just confirming. And so looking at what it can do, it's okay. I don't hate this line, but I feel like I'm holding an explosive device in my hands that could give out at any moment and do a bunch of damage to my drawing, to my hand, to my clothes. I don't like the way that it filled, even though I'm okay with how it's putting down lines. I don't know what to say. I do, yeah, I do, I do think that's a good line. but I'm conflicted. I don't know. I 
Yeah, this is kind of the, the thickness that I vibe with right now. I'm not enjoying this super fine as much uh, when I'm drawing because I just kind of like putting down a juicy line. And this puts down a juicy line for an extra fine. It really does put down that juicy line. But uh, whew, I don't know. I don't know what we're dealing with here. I do not trust this pen. So, jury's still out on whether or not it's going to be a trustworthy pen. I'll say this, I've been doing this for a bit, and reverse writing is actually quite nice. It hasn't inked on me yet, and I, I know that uh, other pens that I've had that have um, burped, Usually by this point in time in the video, they have already done it. So maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe this is a perfectly fine pen that just refuses to be filled by way of, um, by way of converter, even though it has a converter. So there's still a problem. Problem doesn't appear to be flow. Let me just, um, let me just do a couple of taps here see if I burp ink. Oh, okay, I got a little blob there. But there are other, see I'm still conflicted because there are other pens that I have that if I whack them on the table as hard as I just whacked this one, they would do the same thing. So I'm not sure. Let's just get some art advice in. Uh, art advice, simple and in proportion. I just realized that was off screen. Okay, um, these are some thoughts I've been having lately. I would much rather see a simple drawing um, that's got the right proportions meaning that um, shapes are the height and width that they need to be, and they're the appropriate percentage of the drawing as, as uh, observed. I'd rather see this correct than to see a bunch of details when this part is not correct. Proportion plays a huge part in making a drawing pleasing and interesting to the eye. Something to think about. It's a hard skill to learn but we focus a lot on learning how to draw details really well. Proportion is your ticket to satisfying art. Keeping that in mind, let's see if the proportion of these nib line weights remains consistent throughout a drawing. Check this out. So um, this drawing is inspired a little bit by uh, the series and comic book Sweet Tooth. Um, I've been watching the series on Netflix and I really enjoyed what they did with it. Um, I'm also reading through the comic book by Jeff Lemire that was the original story. And this is one of the, the few occasions where I actually prefer the new version to the original um, or this TV show to the book. I just feel like it has more heart and um, the, the comic book, and uh, intentionally so I'm sure, is just very um, dark and sort of cruel. Um, it, it's a good read, it's worth a check out if you really like comic books and if you have Netflix, that show's really cool. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I did not enjoy working with this pen. You could see me doing a little maintenance right there. Um, this is my little tribute uh, to that show and to uh, my outlook on uh, dark things, I guess. Um, you know, look on the bright side. The world may be ending, but uh, at least you don't have this terrible pen uh, like me. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the drawing. Okay, so uh, the video, the drawing just finished. I just want to point something out. First of all, this is how much of that ink that I really like that I blotted off of this pen in the process of 
uh, making this video and refilling it and having to stop and refill it in the middle. Um, and also, if you look at the inside of this pen that's never been used before filming this video, um, here is what you see. not getting into focus but there's ink on the outside of this pen along the edges here and right there so it didn't leak on me but it was getting ready to leak on me I want anyone who who wants to jump the defense of this pen I just want you to notice that is what happened and I was right. So, um, bomb waiting to go off. Major disappointment. Okay, so two pieces of advice as we wrap things up. Uh, and only one of them is don't buy this pen. So, uh, first things first, don't buy this pen. You should, and this is the second thing, buy a different pen. At the price point, this isn't about a $25 price point. There's a bunch of better pens you could buy. Um, the Picasso uh, 916 is an example. Um, the, uh, let's see, the Jinhao 51A is an example that's half the price of that. The, uh, the Muji pen is cheaper than this pen and is way better. For drawing if you're into that sort of um, Western extra fine style nib that we've got here um, any of the offerings from pen BBS are quite nice um, and you could get a uh, a Caveco sport for um, around this price point so there's a lot of uh, players in the game that beat out the Kaigalu in build quality and in sturdiness of design I highly recommend you go that direction if you're looking at this kind of pen um, this just doesn't cut it for me. There's too much competition. There's too much good stuff out there for you to get stuck with, uh, this thing. Uh, I'm still scared it's going to squirt ink on me. I, I had to, to, I may need to take it out of the room to finish this review up because if it gets mad at me, it might seek its revenge. Um, anyway, uh, I regret that purchase, but, uh, you don't have to regret it. And I, you should not regret, I hope, watching this video, liking and subscribing. I've got other videos planned for the future, so I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves until then.